Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with how I discovered Schumann, Robert Schumann. Now, Robert Schumann was a very problematic composer for me. And I've noticed in some of the comments that he's kind of a problematic composer for a lot of you, too. It's taken me a great deal of time to appreciate especially his piano music. And here's the reason why. I mean, I've mentioned this on a couple previous occasions, but it's worth telling the story in full. My father was something of a piano prodigy. And he really had a talent. And he had, for example, scholarship offers to major conservatories, and he won piano competitions, and, and he hated it. Really, he hated it because my grandmother, who was the best grandmother in the world, was an absolutely terrible mother. She really like wanted to work in my grandfather's auto parts store and not be bothered with children. And when she had them, they were best sort of seen and not heard. And she insisted that my father take piano lessons and my aunt too, which was a whole other psychodrama. And his piano teacher was this grumpy old kraut, as he called him, um, an old German guy who insisted that my father spend his life playing Schumann. My father wanted to play jazz. He wanted to play popular music. That's what he loved. But he had to sit there and bang away at Schumann. Now, when I be got into classical music, which I did when I was like three or four, I probably got that part of it, or some of it, from my father, um, although my mother was the music person in the family after that, uh, my, my father did nothing to encourage it because he'd had such a terrible experience. My grandmother used to set the egg timer for him to practice and like flip it over to make it go longer. And he once asked her, he said, why did you, why did you make me do that? It was awful. And she said, because I wanted you to do something that I could be proud of. I mean, it was it was just awful. It really was. So, so when you, my father heard the word Schumann, he was like Pavlovian. He would like turn green and drool. I mean, he's like, I hate Schumann. So I grew up thinking I really should hate Schumann. But my approach to Schumann then totally eliminated the piano music, which I still have a lot of trouble with, quite frankly. Some of it anyway. Some of it I think is magnificent. Some of it just drives me nuts. And, and so I started with the symphonies. But that was a whole nother problematic issue. But my first experience of Schumann symphonies came rather late because I was sort of averse to Schumann generally. It was when I was in high school. And I listened to them and I said, okay, they're okay. But by then I'd heard Dvorak and Mozart and Haydn and Beethoven. And he just seemed less interesting than all of them. He really did. And what's more, all I did was read notes and you read the notes and, 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 and the classical music world teaches you to kind of look down on Schumann's orchestral music because his orchestration was questionable. Some people say it's fine. Some people say it's lousy. Some people say it needs work. It doesn't matter what people say. The reality is he wasn't a very good orchestrator. Doesn't mean he couldn't be effective. Doesn't mean his symphonies don't get the job done, but they aren't as brilliant as they could be, possibly. And and the orchestration is very dense. And the and the evidence for that is not any sort of, you know, written thing that people say. It's the fact that when you compare performances, they can sound very different because A, most conductors tinkle or tinkle, tinkle. No, they don't tinkle. That's a different thing. Tinker with the orchestration. They tinker with it to make it clearer, to allow the woodwind parts to, to stand out a little bit um, and to disclog the string writing, which doubles everything, especially in the Rhenish Symphony and a little bit later on after that. And, and, and even so, by you know, the way that you balance things in performance, they can also sound very different. And we're not talking about sounding very different just from a purely interpretive point of view. We're talking about sounding very different in their essence, in like where you hear the tune and who gets the tune. That's the indication that the orchestration is problematic. And there's no debating that. It, that's the reality of Schumann performance. So, so I had issues coming to grips with those because I was an absolutist. I wanted to know what did the composer write? And who realizes it the best? Even from my earliest days, I was kind of a critic. And with Schumann, that's kind of impossible. I mean, you can know what he wrote, but you have to look at, 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 at how what he wrote is translated into sound in a much more detailed and, and sort of random way than you have to with other composers who are really wonderful at orchestration.
and the kittens are playing. That's that noise you hear in the background. Hello, dear. Okay. So anyway, anyway, so Schumann was tough. Then, of course, there was Schumann, the songwriter. Well, I've never been a leader person. I think a basic song with piano was like, ugh. I mean, I like popular song. I like song with rhythm. I like, I like rock. I mean, that was what I grew up with. That's what I always liked. Classical songs seem always sounded to me like kind of rhythmless, watered down rock things that, that were the, they talked about the same stuff, but they just didn't have the drive and the interest. So, you know, that took a whole nother thing. So Schumann's songs were, were on the other side of the border, beyond the pale. And his, his piano music was like off limits. Even when I started playing the piano, I didn't touch Schumann. I did not. I mean, I knew better because my father would go crazy. And and then after that, you know, the symphonies were always sort of second tier. I mean, even Bruckner called Schumann's symphonies sinfoniettas. He thought that they were kind of, you know, not very interesting. So, so it, it's taken me an awful long time to unlearn a lot of these things. But for the piano music, you, you know, you, I've had to just sit down and really listen to it, listen to it hard and really concentrate on what it's doing because it was radical and fabulous piano music for its time. But, you know, in this time, there was more flashy piano music. It's not, doesn't have Chopin's soulfulness in the same degree or, or, or melodic fecundity. And, you know, it's, it's not Liszt, it's not flashy and virtuosic. You know, Schumann's dislike of empty virtuosity, as they call it, I think was absolutely one of the most awful aesthetic positions anybody could take in the 19th century. Um, and his music is often very virtuosic. It's very difficult. Let's not, let's not, you know, the piano works are not easy by any stretch of the imagination, but they don't make a point of display. And his life as a critic, you know, dogging people who did make, you know, a point of display, um, counted against him in my book also because there's nothing wrong with a little display now and then. I mean, you know, it's the icing on the cake. So, so yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been a lot of sweat and toil, but it's been worth it. I have to say it's always, you know, because the people who said that Schumann was a genius were right, that he was a great composer. They were absolutely right. But you have to find out, you know, his strengths and weaknesses and take him on his own. And some of the piano works that I always liked were sort of the off the beaten track ones, like the Songs of Dawn or the Four Fugues on Bach or things like that. You know, I liked all the, the oddities. Carnival, never did it for me. Chrysleriana, nah. Papillon, drove me crazy. Butterflies, I mean, who cares? Swat the little suckers. <laughs> Splat, there you go. Enough of the butterflies. So yeah, um, I've, I've come around and I'm still coming around. It's a process. It's a process of discovery. For me, Schumann is a new composer somebody who was not part of my normal musical life and vocabulary and and who I discover as somebody who who might have written the stuff yesterday because I didn't know it as well as perhaps I should have and I, I allow classicstoday.com critics like Jed Disler to lead me in my Schumann explorations and uh, to find the best performances or the most interesting performances and as a result of that I think I'm finally coming around but like I said, it's a process, and it probably has been a process for some of you. So for those of you who say you can't stand him or don't need him or he's worthless or whatever, don't, don't give up. Don't give up. I know it sounds silly for me to say there's a lot there when Western civilization has already decided. But what Western civilization decides only matters to the extent that you can sympathize, that you feel similarly. And a lot of people don't, and there's a good reason you don't. He's not easy. He's not one of those composers that we should all just say, ah, genius, classical, yay. No, take some work there. We have to understand where his genius lies in his, in his gift for the wonderful musical aphorism, for fabulous melodic cells, for eruptions of fantastic passion, for the extremes of, 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 of exaltation and and depression that later resulted in his insanity. That's one of the best things going for him, the fact that he went crazy. That's like a recommendation 
in any of the arts, right? The crazier you are, the more profound your art must be. I think Schumann gets a lot of the benefit of the doubt for that reason, perhaps rightly so, perhaps wrongly. But all I can say is keep on listening, friends, and thank you for joining me. Take care.